hot-blooded, check it and say, Dracula's a dead dude, so his temperature's like, I don't know, 53. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, friends, welcome back for more Halloween. <laughs> This time, we're talking about Dracula. Did you ever notice Dracula gets all the chicks? They just go for him, don't they? But Dracula's a dead dude. Zombies and mummies are dead dudes too, but they aren't sexy. Dracula, he gets all the chicks. True, Dracula is more polished than a zombie or a mummy. He has that continental accent, and he's a count. He sports that sweet cape and is all posh, dressed up in his evening wear. They say clothes make the man, but he also has something else going for him. He has the power to mesmerize the chicks. He goes around and gets the chicks all excited, all hot and bothered, but instead of having hot makeouts, what does he do? He just puts the chomp on them instead. Usually he kills his victims, but sometimes he turns them into vampiruses. Even Bella Lugosi's Dracula had three wives. Not sure what they got up to, they just sort of seemed to be hanging around. And every now and then Dracula decides to trade up and get another one. But he doesn't seem to do anything with them, does he? But what if he did? What if Dracula was lonely? This time we're taking a look at some pictures where Dracula decides he wants more than a little blood from sexy chicks. If you know what I mean. First up we have this thing, Dracula the Dirty Old Man from 1969, which purports to be a comedy, I guess. In this one, Drac takes over this macho guy and turns him into his pet werewolf. His job is to go out and get Dracula's sexy chicks. And he does. Back in his lair, Dracula proceeds to make the ladies more comfortable by undressing them <laughs> and having fun before he puts the bite on them. Now, this movie is certifiably terrible, no doubt about it. The sound quality here was so bad the filmmakers had to dub over everything. That's right, the entire soundtrack. At first I thought this was a Riff Tracks version. They gave the vampire a sort of comic Yiddish accent and the werewolf servant fares about as well. It's on a par with Manos the Hands of Fate. If Manos put its hands on sexy chicks, then there's Dracula Sucks from 1978. And yes, this movie certainly does live up to its name. This started out as a full-on X-rated picture, and there are several cuts to choose from. One is a comedy version with the dialogue all overdubbed. Another is like 80 minutes and is reportedly incomprehensible. The version I have is 90 minutes, and this is an R+. So, while you do see some things, it's not a full-on X. Here, the filmmakers actually tried to follow the story of Dracula, but not Bram Stoker's novel. No, they did a take on the 1931 film starring Bela Lugosi. <laughs> it seems like it anyway, right down to Renfield's lap. I mean, some places it's like line for line. As terrible as this movie is, it does have at least one legit actor. This guy, Reggie Nalder, who plays Dr. Van Helsing. You may know him better as the Andorian Ambassador from Journey to Babel, an episode of the original Star Trek. This is not a great film by any stretch of the imagination, and you could skip this one in any of its various iterations and go through the rest of your life just fine. Then we have one I did like. Dracula Blows is Cool from 1979. In this picture, Mr. and Mrs. Dracula are living in an ancestral home now owned by a modern-day relative who looks just like the Count. 
he is a photographer for a men's magazine, and you know what that means. Lots of sexy chicks. Trying to make ends meet, he turns the place into a Dracula-themed discotheque, much to the chagrin of the local busybody. Eventually, Drac wants a snack and gets turned on by the chicks, while Mrs. Dracula wants to play with a boy toy. The relative cooks up the idea of making the place a sort of vampire-themed hotel where guests come to have the bite put on them and maybe get some sexy time. The vampires, for their part, get to chow down. At least a little bit. They, they don't want to polish off the clientele. Just give them a little thrill. This one was actually pretty funny. Finally, we have Old Dracula, also known as Vampira, from 1974. This is more of a legit film and not one that would be allowed to be made today, though. It's a comedy starring David Niven as Count Dracula. Now, Drac's wife, Vampira, has been in a sort of coma for the past 50 years on account of getting some bad blood. Ever since, Drac has been looking for a catalyst to restore his missus. One night, a playboy photographer and a bevy of beautiful bunnies show up at Castle Dracula for a hot photo shoot. Dracula determines one of the babes has the right kind of blood, so he goes ahead and gives his wife a transfusion. Unfortunately, he chose the wrong chick's blood, and Mrs. Dracula becomes... Blackula, and turns into Teresa Graves. <laughs> so now Drac has to retrace his steps, track down the beautiful babes, and try to figure out where he went wrong. To do that, he takes his wife and his servant and follows all of these uh, sexy chicks to London and takes control of the photographer. Comedy ensues. Now, I really enjoyed this one, even though you couldn't even dream of making this movie today. David Niven is excellent as Dracula, trying to navigate the modern world. Teresa Graves is having fun with this, and it shows. I like Dracula's servant, too. He's played by Peter Bayliss, a very familiar face. And there's several other familiar faces, too. Peter Breslaw, Freddie Jones, and Frank Thornton pop up, and Penny Irving plays one of the bunnies. She and Thornton were both in the famous Britcom, Are You Being Served? These last two I can recommend if you're a grown-up looking for a fun, dopey Dracula movie for Halloween, where Dracula is hot-blooded. <laughs> you be careful trick-or-treating, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>